Hello and welcome. So this video covers Azure AD Identity Protection, given an introduction, step-by-step -step guide. So let's first start by asking what is Azure AD Identity Protection? So it's licensed under a premium P2 license and it's all about risk detection and remediation. So identity protection, it uses AD threat intelligence to determine whether the user's uh, sign-ins are, are risky and can block depending on uh, the risk level and policy. So identity protection categorizes risk into three tiers, low, medium and high. So Microsoft don't provide exact details how risk is calculated. Each level, uh, low, medium or high, brings higher confidence that the user or sign-in is compromised. For example, it can detect uh, typical travel. So if a user signs in in, say, London, and then 10 minutes later signs in from New York, then uh, this user can be flagged as risky. Uh, together with anonymous IP addresses, unfamiliar sign-in properties, uh, malware-linked IP addresses, etc. So the link in the description lists the sign-in risks covered. So looking at the diagram, the user signs in, the real-time sign-in risk is calculated against the user risk level. For both risk types, you can set up identity protection policies to let users remediate the risk. Users with a risky signing can self remediate by satisfying the MFA challenge. Users that trigger the user risk policy can be blocked or forced to reset their password. Or if no user risk is calculated, uh, the user login is successful. So that's an overview of Azure AD identity protection. So let's dive in and check out how it's all configured in the portal and demo triggering policy for a user. Before we do, it would be really appreciated if you could subscribe to the channel to help it grow. There's a good selection of videos and you'll be notified of new videos released um, on lots of varied topics on Azure Cloud. Thank you. So let's take a look what's covered in this video. So we cover licensing, policy settings, including MFA registration, and conditional access for identity protection, user risk policy and sign-in risk policy. We configure a test user and review identity protection, risky users and sign-ins. We trigger a high risk user, demoing what happens during blocking of that user and how we can unblock or class it as compromised. And we can also configure trusted IPs. And we can also block locations based upon country. OK, so to use identity protection, we need a P2 license. So this allows conditional access to also be used to create policy around user risk policy and sign in risk levels. So here we will activate a trial license for demo purposes during this video. As we can see, if we go into identity protection now without the license, it's requesting we have a, have a license and features are greyed out. So let's go to admin.microsoft.com under billing, purchase services, we can search for an AD premium to license and sign up to a trial to activate identity protection and conditional access. Once activated, we can assign the P2 license to a user by going into Azure AD, selecting the user, going to licenses and assigning the P2 license. Okay, good. So now we are licensed. Let's take a look uh, at the identity protection policies within the portal. So these are split between user risk policy and sign in policy. So the difference is user risk. It represents the probability that a given identity or account is compromised. Sign in risk represents the probability that a given authentication request isn't authorized by the identity owner. So we can decide here what users are targeted, for example, all users or individual user accounts or groups, and we can exclude users here from policy. We can configure user risk levels needed for policy to be enforced. 
So in this case, for the demo, we will choose medium risk. So this is down to your environment and depends on your requirements. And then we can choose what happens when policy is triggered to block access or to allow access forced a password change. Again, for the purposes of this demo, we will block access. So for sign-in risk policy, we have the same settings. So we will choose exactly the same as the user risk policy here. So we turn enforce policy to on, and then we save for both policies. Okay, great. So now we can configure an additional conditional access policy. So both user and sign-in risk can be used as conditions in conditional access. So the reason we would do this is that user risk support in Azure AD conditional access policy allows you to create multiple user risk based policies. So different minimum user risk levels can be required for different users and applications. Based upon user risk, you can create policies to block access or require multi-factor authentication, MFA, uh, secure password change, for example. So let's take a look. So we create a new CA policy, for example, for Office 365 users. So we can target all users. Uh, in this case, we will target a group. So we can also exclude users from this policy as well. So next we can decide what applications the policy uh, is applied. Okay, so we can choose all cloud apps or selected applications. So if we choose all cloud apps, it's advisable to exclude a user from policy just in case as you don't want to block or lock yourself out of the policy. Under conditions, here is the identity protection settings that we can configure, user risk and sign-in risk. So we will choose high risk for when the user is classed um, at this risk level, the policy will be enforced. And we can also configure device platform uh, that this targets, locations, client applications. We can add filters as well if we need them. Next, we choose access controls. So we can choose that we require MFA and a password change, for example. So choosing the required password change does disable other conditions, um, which we'll see shortly. Also, required password change is only applied when all cloud apps is selected. Can also change some session controls as shown. So let's enable the policy, but first we'll exclude a user just in case we have issues and we need to go back to the portal so we are not locked out. As mentioned earlier, choosing the required password change does disable other conditions. So you can see they're greyed out here. So let's, uh, let's have a look at the other examples we can change in the policy to target um, different things. So let's untick the required password change and configure the sign in risk options.
and we want to actually block access rather than require MFA if a high-risk user is triggered with, within identity protection. And let's just target a selected app for this policy. So let's choose Office 365 um, application only. And then we want this policy to apply to a trusted location only. So if we go to a named uh, locations, we can add a trusted location um, based upon IP address. And let's go back to the policy to add the trusted location. Uh, we can actually see it's grayed out as we didn't save the unticking of the required password change. So let's do that again and choose the selected location as trusted uh, where this policy will be applied. So as you can see, there's lots of different options. These all examples that show you different scenarios we can configure uh, conditional access policy against. These are specific to your environment and requirements when deciding to what to configure here. And I would also suggest you, know, you target a group of test users and test your choosing policy works correctly before rolling out to production. OK, so MFA is configured for our test user via conditional access policy. So we can sign in via office.com. We can enter the password and then we are prompted for additional information to configure MFA for this user. We choose our authentication method via the Microsoft Authenticator app, which we have downloaded on our mobile device. And we click set up and configure the mobile app by scanning the QR code on the screen. So after we enter our mobile number and finish, MFA is configured for that user. So next time we log in, it will ask for a password together with ver verification on the mobile device. So we can now see from the sign-in logs of the user, the IP address location of where we logged in, and the applications that we started. OK, so now let's take a look at where we will see risky users and sign-ins within the identity protection application. So as you can see, there's been no risky users triggered. Uh, so in the next section, we're going to trigger policy based upon a change in IP address location. OK, so there's two screens here. The screen at the back shows our location, which we have now set to USA. And we are going to demo a typical travel where we will simulate logging in from different countries in a short space of time to trigger identity protection policy. So in this scenario, it would be impossible or unlikely users could be in each locations in this short space of time, therefore indicating something's wrong with the attempted logins for multiple locations. So we log in with our test user and approve MFA set earlier. So if we look back at the logs, we can see our IP address and location has changed now to USA. Now we will change our location again to Canada and we will log in again. So when we do this, we can see that identity protection has now blocked the user from signing in based upon some detection that there's an unusual activity on the sign-in from different locations. 
Okay, so again we check the sign in logs for that user and we can see again a sign in was attempted from Canada. So let's now check identity protection. So we get an email alert that a user at risk was detected at a high risk. And when we look in the identity protection portal, we can see risk user signings, uh, listing IP address and location, etc. Conditional access of MFA was not applied as it was blocked before that stage. So signings show uh, information based upon the application, browser, location, IP address, etc. So this user is now blocked. And interestingly, if we look at the user properties of the user account, it isn't flagged as blocked. That's all done under identity protection. Okay, so now the user is blocked. So let's see what options we have for unblocking that user. So we are set to block in the policy. I mean, we could also set to allow access and require a password change if required. If we look at the risky user, we can unblock if we are happy that the user has not been compromised and is not at risk by ticking the user and clicking dismiss user risk. So then when we click refresh, the user is not listed anymore and the user is unblocked and is allowed to log in once again. If the user was high risk and the account has been compromised, then we can confirm by clicking uh, confirm users compromised. The risk state then changes to confirm compromised. So if we wanted to unblock after any investigations has been made and the user is no longer at risk, we can dismiss user risk once again. So we can also restrict and block countries by location and blocking via conditional access policies created earlier in this video. And as you can see here, the trusted IP we added to our existing conditional access policy has already been created from earlier. And here we can create countries um, by location to block. So thanks for watching the video. Hope it was helpful. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel to receive notification of future videos. Thanks for watching.